Back in the Word of God today, we're going to be in our final study, preparing for the end days. But before we get started, let's ask for words of wisdom from our Heavenly Father in Yeshua Jesus Christ, the Messiah's precious, precious name. Now, this study is going to be mostly a study, but with a twist. Do you know the Word of God tells us exactly when Jesus Christ will return? And we're going to get into that today. We're going to do a summary, and then we're going to go into the return of our Lord and Savior. Because our Heavenly Father tells us all things, He does not leave us wanting. So let's get into this, and let's see what our Heavenly Father needs us to know. Now, in the studies preceding this one, we talked about how Satan was a protective cherubim on walking up and down in the mountain of God. But iniquity set in. He no longer wanted to be a protective cherubim. He wanted to be God. Documentation is Ezekiel chapter 28, starting at verse 12. He fell, and when he fell, he took a third of God's children with him. We watched how he has come in this earth age, in the flesh earth age, and how he's uh, beguiled Eve and Adam. Ultimately, we know that through that union that we now have Satan's children, children of the wicked one. And we went and we talked about it extensively when we talked about Matthew chapter 13 in the parable of the tares. Now, Satan works and he works hard. He knows he has a short time. He's got children here doing his work and doing his bidding. Now, with these are the Kenites. These are the people in control of the four hidden dynasties of education, finance, government, and they're in the churches as well. They are pulling the strings on everything that we see going on today because they are needing and for prophecy to be fulfilled that new world government must come in and they are pulling the strings and my opinion is they will put the world in such desperation that they will be able and be willing to accept whatever savior comes no matter who it is now <clears throat> excuse me now what we need to understand is satan is coming we've already documented he is the enemy and he is going to return here and he is going to sit in the holy place claiming to be god he is the Antichrist. So let's get in. Let's do a little review. And then we're going to disclose the day that Jesus Christ is going to return. Because our Heavenly Father does not leave us wanting. He tells us all things. Let's get into it, folks. And let's see what our Heavenly Father needs us to go. We're going to pick it up in Revelation chapter 12. I'm going to start reading it. Verse 7. Again, this is review. But we're going to come and we're going to show when Jesus Christ it will return. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7, And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Michael is holding Satan right now and his fallen angels. When God gives the cue, there will be a war. Michael and his angels will fight against Satan and the fallen angels. And guess what? Satan and his fallen angels are losers, folks. They are losers. What's going to happen? Verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that O serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out unto the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, Satan is going to be cast out of heaven, and guess where he's coming? Here. So when you see all the different names he has here, the dragon, the serpent, the devil, Satan, we also can throw in there just a few more, but he has many names he goes by, but he's one entity. The adversary, the son of perdition, Apollia, Abaddon, Apollyon, many different names he goes by, but he's one entity, and that is Satan, the adversary to our living God. He is against our Holy Heavenly Father, and whoever is against our Heavenly Father is our enemy as well, and there is a war going on right now. But we know that this war that we are going into, this battle that we are about to go into, will end all battles. Verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Now Satan is up there every time we mess up saying, You see your children down there, you see what they're doing. He's the accuser as well. But who is, when it says, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Christ is Christos in the Greek tongue. Thus the anointed one, the Messiah. Verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Now, who is he talking about? The election of the end days. 
when we know that we will be brought up before councils as a t for a testimony for our living God and a testimony against Satan and his fallen angels. You know, we know that we are here to do a job. This flesh body is nothing but a vessel to hold our, our soul, our spirit, to do a job. Now, when we come here, you've got a decision to make. You're either going to follow our Heavenly Father and the Word of God, or you're going to follow Satan and the ways of the world, and there's just no two way, no other way about it. There's no more fence sitting. We are going into the battle that will end all wars. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Satan is coming, folks. He's coming. He's coming as the Antichrist. Remember, in the Greek tongue, anti means instead of Christ. He's going to come and he's going to be sitting in Jerusalem in the holy place claiming to be God. Let's go over there and read it. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm just going to read verses 3 and 4 today. Now, remember, Paul knows that people were confused about that first letter that he wrote to them. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 is where they get the rapture doctrine from. Well, it's just not biblical. He's going to straighten it out right here. Paul's writing to the Thessalonians and he's telling them, listen up, folks. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except that there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. What day are we talking about? The day of the Lord, the return of Jesus Christ, will not come until there be a falling away first. That's an apostasy. That is a defection from the truth. That is people that have claimed Christianity or to be a Christian their whole life. But the hour of temptation, the tribulation of the Antichrist, they leave their first love and they go and they serve and worship Satan. The man of sin be revealed. People think it's going to be a flesh man because they see this man. Remember, Gabriel means man of God and he's an angelic. He's a good angel. Satan is the worst of the worst. That man of sin, the wicked one, is Satan. The son of perdition. Perdition means to perish. Satan is the only one who has been called out by name for destruction. Satan and his fallen angels are going down. Verse 4. Who opposeth? Who is this we're talking about? Is Satan, the Antichrist. Who opposeth and exalted itself above all that is called God? Or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He's going to do this, folks. Satan is beautiful. He's supernatural. He's going to come in prosperously and peacefully. And like I said before, the world is going to be pushed in so much utter destruction that they will be a willing to accept any entity that comes in claiming to be God, bringing in prosperity, bringing in seemingly peace. But there will be no peace until the Prince of Peace returns. That is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, how do you know the difference then? How will we know when a beautiful... Being sitting in the holy place, all these miraculous things he's doing, how will we know that is that the, is the Antichrist? Paul teaches, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, let's read it. In a moment, y'all, that's not any moment, it's in a moment specified by our living God. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. The last trump, folks, that's number seven. There's only seven trumpets. The last trump, the furthest one out. When Jesus Christ returns here, we will all be changed from our flesh body over to our spiritual body at that moment. Not before then, not after then. So if someone comes sitting in the holy place claiming to be God, pinch yourself. If you feel it, you're still in the flesh. He's a liar and a loser. It's the Antichrist sitting in the holy place claiming to be God. <clears throat> now what has to happen? We talked about it, and I said, well, I'm going to tell you exactly when Jesus Christ is going to return here. We're going to go over real quick to Malachi. There's things that have to come down and has to happen before Jesus Christ returns here. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. We're going to go over there, and we're going to read this, and we're going to talk about the two witnesses. Let's go over here and read it. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1, and it reads, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Now that, now to have understanding about this, we've got to remember that Second Peter 
chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So we're talking about the end of that day of the Lord. Jesus Christ returns here. That begins the day of the Lord. After that thousand years of teaching, the millennium, then Satan will be released for a short time to try the children, and many of them will follow him still. But those will be turned to ashes, um, as we just read in Malachi. Verse 2, Malachi chapter 4, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Now, when you see this son of righteousness, remember Jesus Christ said in John chapter 8, verse 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So this is Jesus Christ we're talking about over here in Malachi chapter 4. The son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the of the stall. Now remember, a calf in a stall through the winter months is kept there. But when Jesus Christ returns here, we are going to be we're going to be released just like that calf that's out in the pasture. So much joy. I don't think that we can even understand how joyful and peaceful it's going to be when Jesus Christ returns here. Y'all, it's going to be good. Wickedness is going to be done with forever. Nothing that offends will be with us in eternity. Verse 3, And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts, Satan, his fallen angels, all the wicked people are going down. Verse 5, Behold, I, I'm sorry. Verse 4, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. So, now I'm going to go ahead and just put this forward you know i believe moses is going to be one of the witnesses he is here and he is the lawgiver remember now let's read the next verse behold i will send you elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the lord elijah is going to come and i believe it to be elijah and moses the witnesses of the end days but let's read this next verse why is elijah the prophet coming Verse 6, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Turning the heart of the fathers to their children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. There's two fathers. There's our Heavenly Father. There is no greater. He is our Holy Heavenly Father. He is our God. Now, but on the other hand, you've got Satan here. Now, he is the wicked one. We just talked about all his different names he goes by. He's also a father, and he's got children here, too. Children of the wicked one. We talk about them often, these Kenites. They were keeping books for Judah in 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55. The house of Rahab. They are the same ones spoken of in Revelation chapter 2, 9 and Revelation chapter 3, 9. Those people who claim to be of our brother Judah, but do lie and are of the synagogue of Satan. Now, they're here with us now, and they are very busy at work. If you aren't sure, go and do a Google search, Acts chapter 7, verse 43, image, and that will help you. But these people are here with us today. They are pulling the strings to bring in this world government that's coming. Verse 6, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers. There's two fathers, folks. Remember, there's two fathers, our holy heavenly father and Satan. But both fathers have children, and the Heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. This has to happen. Elijah, one of the witnesses, has to come here to turn the heart of the fathers to their children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Now, where is this written? In the New Testament, Revelation chapter 11. We're going to go over there and we're going to read this. Our Heavenly Father does not leave us wanting. He shows us how it's going to come down. Let's read it. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. Now this reed like unto a rod is more of a rod of correction. The rod of correction is coming. Verse 2, And the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city, 
shall they tread under foot 40 and two months. Now, 42 months is three and a half years, that original seven years. We know the Gentiles, when you talk about darkness and night and months, that's of Satan. So these people are children of the wicked one. Now, let's read the next verse. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Now, this is one thousand two hundred uh, sixty days. And remember, days is of light. Days is of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Heavenly Father. Daylight. Remember, we just talked about Jesus Christ is the light of the world. But those prophecies given in days is of God's children. Now, these two witnesses uh, shall prophesy 1,203 score days. Days, again, that's three and a half months. But we know days are longer than the nights. And I have not done the math. Uh, I think it will be between one and a half and two days before the Antichrist gets here, sitting in the holy place, claiming to be God, that the witnesses will be here. A few days, a couple of days, uh, they will come and they will bring us they're going to bring us comfort. They're going to bring us guidance. And they're going to bring us direction. Let's keep reading. Verse 4. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. These two olive trees, these are the two witnesses spoken of in Zechariah. The two candlesticks, I believe this is Smyrna and Philadelphia. The only two churches that Jesus Christ was pleased with. Why was he pleased with those two churches? Revelation 2.9, Revelation 3.9, excuse me. They taught the difference between those people who say they are brother Judah but do lie and the real house of Judah. Now, let's go over here. I'm, I'm not going to go into Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 4 in, my, in the playlist is... Um, is there if you want to go over and view this. But I'm going to put up this very simplistic drawing of the two olive trees. Remember, in the Greek tongue, olive is Eliyah. You have the uh, title of God and the proper name of God. El, title, God. Yah, proper name of our living God. Eliyah, olive. Now, you'll see these two trees and off them is coming pipes that go into a reservoir. What are they putting there? That are putting oil there. Eleya, the truth, the word of God. Uh, and remember, comfort, direction, and instruction. Going into that reservoir, there are four pipes, I'm sorry, seven pipes coming off the reservoir going to the seven candlesticks. That is going to be the election of the end times, the the ones who will be brought up before Satan and his counsels for a testimony of our living God, but also a testimony against Satan and his fallen angels. Back into Revelation chapter 11, verse 5. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Verse 6. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. That's, a lot. That's an earmark of Elijah right there, folks. And have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all the plagues as often as they will. That's an earmark of Moses. Verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Now, who is this beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit? Remember in um, Revelation chapter 9, we're talking about the locust army. They had a king over them who was the angel of the bottomless pit, and his name was given in the two languages, Apollyon in the Greek and Abaddon in the Hebrew, we're talking about the destroying angel who is Satan. I'm going to put these up here for you. They are going to come. They're going to finish their testimony and Satan will make war with them and he is going to kill them. Now, what's going to happen while they lay there in the street? Verse 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Our Lord was not crucified in Sodom or Egypt. This is spiritually speaking what went on in Sodom, folks. Perversion, physical flesh perversion. But when we're talking about spiritual perversion, what is the most perverted thing a Christian could ever do? 
leave their first love and go worship and serve Satan during the hour of temptation, the tribulation of the Antichrist, because they're not prepared. That is a spiritual perversion. And what about Egypt? Now, Egypt took the whole house of Israel captive, remember? But in the end days, Satan is going to take the whole world into captivity. How is he going to do it? Lies and deception. The whole world wandered after the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 3. He's a, Satan is a liar and a loser, and he is going to deceive the whole world. Don't be in that people. Verse 9, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Now, my opinion is that they're going to cue in on this. It's going to be live cam broadcast all over the world. Smartphones, computers, televisions broadcasting. These two witnesses lying in the street, you know, when you're laying in the sun and it's hot, a, a dead body decomposes. Just get this picture. Verse 10, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. It's going to be like Christmas on steroids, but folks, people are going to be joyful. Why are they going to be joyful over these two men's death? Because they believe they are worshiping God. And the two witnesses are going, This is not God. This is not your Lord. This is not your Savior. It's Satan. The Antichrist. But they don't want to believe the truth. Remember 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. For those who do not want do not have a love for the truth, God will send them strong the delusion that they will believe a lie. Verse 11. And after three days and a half the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. There's going to be knees knocking on that day. They are going to, after laying there in the street for three days, they're going to rise up on their feet. Verse 12, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. They're going to watch it. The whole world's going to see it. The whole world is going to see this. The return of Jesus is imminent within that hour. Let's read it. Verse 13, And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. You know, the remnant, those are the witnesses that, I mean, I'm sorry, those are the election that will be here, the set-aside ones that are going to be brought up for a testimony. We will go to our knees praising our Lord God Almighty because we know, we know our Savior is returning. Verse 14, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Woe, warning, watch. Verse 15, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And I always want to say amen after that verse. Amen and amen. Verse 16, And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks, O God. Oh, I'm sorry. Saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which are and wast and art to come because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reign. Verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to thy saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great. And should, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Now, people think they're getting away with doing a lot of the things that they're doing. These evil, wicked people who are destroying God's earth. You know, we watch the chemical trails and we see how they are using chemicals to uh, kill plants and, and to kill, you know, vegetation. Fruits and vegetables are tainted. You know, they're injecting harmful um chemicals into our agriculture and putting it out into 
the world for consumption. These people that are destroying God's earth and his children, their days are numbered. They are going into, unless they change, they are going into the lake of fire to be blotted out for eternity. Now remember, if you want to know how things are going to come down, you can go. And it's Jesus Christ teaching. Matthew 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21. It is profound. Jesus Christ, the simplicity in his teaching is absolutely amazing. But we know that Jesus Christ is not going to return here until after the hour of temptation, the tribulation of the Antichrist. So let's go over and let's read something real quick because Jesus Christ tells us, when you hear and see these things going on, do not go. Let's read it. Matthew chapter 24, we're going to read verses 25 through 27, and we're going to wrap it up with this. Jesus Christ speaking, Behold, I have told you before, and we know Mark chapter 13, verse 23, Mark writes, But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. Our Heavenly Father tells us everything. He does not leave us wanting. Verse 26, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. You're still in flesh body, and they say he's out in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. You're still in the flesh body, and they're saying Jesus Christ is returned. Believe them not. Verse 27. Now this is profound. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even into the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Just like the sun rises in the east every single day and sets in the west every single day, Jesus, the coming of Jesus Christ is going to be just as it is written. Just as God has told us it is going to be through his word. No other way. Now, remember, there's a lot of people out there, prognosticators, who are telling God's children they don't have to read and study and know what the word of God has to say. When our Heavenly Father makes it so plain and so clear about how things are going to come down in these end days. Yeah, and that's going to be it for today. I hope you liked today's teaching. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. And let's get the word out. I hope you have a great day and join us again.